there's the litigation umbrella and then there's the corporate umbrella. Which one should I be? Uh, I don't know. Law school prepares you more for litigation practice. It's a gift and a skill set that not everyone has. It's a gift and a skill set that I don't have. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Dina and on my channel you'll find videos about everything law and lifestyle. Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick video comparing litigation versus corporate law. I actually already have two separate and very in-depth videos about what corporate lawyers do and what litigation lawyers do. And I will leave links to those two videos down below. But today I really just wanted to do a quick casual video just comparing the two. This video might be useful for you guys who want a very general idea of what litigation versus corporate law is. Or for you guys who are in law school who are thinking, which one should I be? Okay, so when you speak of kinds of lawyers, at least those in private practice, then you're generally speaking of two kinds. Corporate lawyers on one hand and litigation lawyers or litigators on the other. So that's two very broad umbrellas. There's the litigation umbrella and then there's the corporate umbrella. Of course, there are still some areas of practice or jobs wherein you can be both. For example, if you're a head legal counsel, then you're both a corporate lawyer and a litigation lawyer because you handle both the corporate issues of the corporation as well as any cases filed by or against that corporation. So for example, some of you guys know that I work as a head legal counsel. So I am both a litigation and a corporate lawyer, but I lean predominantly corporate. If the corporation had a litigation issue, like for example, it had to file a case or defend a case, then I would have the prerogative to either outsource it to an external law firm or to defend it myself. So that's why I'm still predominantly corporate. Any and all corporate issues I myself will handle, I do not have the option to outsource them to external counsel. But for litigation matters or cases, then I have the option to outsource them. If only for the reason that filing and defending cases would take a lot of time that I need for my business as usual work, which is mostly corporate. So for a predominantly corporate lawyer like me, litigation and other matters like that would be for special handling. Another example, if you're an intellectual property lawyer or a regulatory lawyer, then you could be both a corporate lawyer and a litigation lawyer because you will not just be handling corporate work, but you'd also be arguing and appearing before government agencies and other regulatory bodies with quasi judicial powers. I don't want to go too deep into the nuances of when litigation and corporate law overlap. Today, I just want to talk about the two different umbrellas for now. So in terms of the corporate law mindset versus the litigation mindset or the culture, litigation lawyers fight for a living. Adversarial proceedings are their living. Conflict is their bread and butter. And in court, someone is winning and someone is losing. Negotiating and arguing is their everyday. Arguing is the thing that they do the most, whether it's in their pleadings or whether it's in open court like you see on TV. When I say pleadings, by the way, I just mean the written exchanges by lawyers in a case. So for example, a complaint, an answer, a reply. So anyway, generally when you're a litigation lawyer, you would either be the lawyer for the plaintiff, which is the party bringing the case, or the lawyer for the defendant, which is the party defending the case. Now, when two litigation lawyers face off, of course the thinking is, I want to win the case and I want you to lose the case. So it's very black and white. One wins and the other loses. Unless, of course, both parties decide to settle the case before final judgment, then there would be no winner and loser. But unless there is that settlement, then in litigation, yeah, there would be a winner and there would be a loser. Corporate lawyers also negotiate, but definitely the thinking is not, I need to win and you need to lose. It's not like that. Think of it this way. Corporate lawyers are also called transactional lawyers. So when the corporate lawyers of two counterparties are interacting, they're going in the same direction because they want to enter into a transaction together. They basically want the same thing. The simplest way that I can put it is this. Transactional lawyers want a transaction to happen. So yes, there could be plenty of negotiations and these could drag on for months, sometimes even years. And there is a lot, lot, lot of back and forth between the parties. But it's not fighting, fighting. For example, party A wants to stipulate a certain provision. But party B wants to carve out an exception to the language proposed by party A. Things like that. But yeah, it's not fighting. Because why would you fight with someone you want to transact with, diba? Right? You can't be fighting because when both parties are trying to work towards a transaction, then both parties have to be happy. Otherwise, the negotiations will stall, eventually there will be a deadlock, and there will be no closing of the deal. Next, let's talk about the difference in terms of daily work. Litigation lawyers are the lawyers we see on TV, arguing before judges and juries. It's the, 
Objection, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Objection sustained. <laughs> Stuff that you see on TV. Most of those depictions of lawyers in media are really of litigation lawyers and not of corporate lawyers. So what do litigation lawyers do? Litigators draft their pleadings, draft their judicial affidavits, interview their witnesses, file their pleadings with the courts, argue their cases before the judge or the agency with quasi-judicial powers. They cross-examine the other party's witnesses. In short, they do what they do to win their case. And by cases, I don't just mean court cases. Huh? It could be cases before any government agency with quasi-judicial functions, like the NLRC, the Bureau of Customs, Bureau of Immigration. There are just so many. And if you're a litigation lawyer, then you could be made to appear before any of those agencies. Again, if you want to know more of the fine details, the nitty-gritty talaga of what litigation lawyers do, then check out my separate video on litigation lawyers in the description box below. Corporate lawyers, on the other hand, are very rarely depicted on TV. Okay, so a lot of what corporate lawyers do are number one, contracts, whether it's the tiniest service contract or a multi-billion peso contract. And two, legal opinions. So for contracts, it's negotiating contracts, drafting them, interpreting them. The signing of a contract is the culmination or the end result of a very, very tedious and drawn out process. Rarely does it ever happen that the other party will accept a contract as it's currently written. Someone will always have something to say, something to negotiate. And that's what takes so long because of course, each party has their own interests to push. For legal opinions naman, it's drafting legal opinions about any question that can be thrown at you. Except for litigation-related questions because if it's a litigation-related question, then it would be thrown to a litigation lawyer instead. But generally, as long as it's not a litigation-related question, then it would be a corporate lawyer who would answer it. When corporations or other entities, or sometimes even people, want to do business, then that's when corporate lawyers come in. For example, if a corporation wants to bid for a government infrastructure project, then that's when corporate lawyers would come in. Another example is an investor wants to build an airport and wants to know the legal framework of the possible transaction. Another example is when a corporation wants to procure the services of another corporation. Another one is if a corporation wants to buy or merge with or acquire another corporation, then corporate lawyers would do the legal due diligence work and flag all the legal risks so that management could assess if it would be a wise investment to merge with that other corporation. The corporate lawyers would also draft the transactional documents. If a corporation wants to enter into a joint venture with another corporation or to create a special purpose vehicle for some business goal, then corporate lawyers would negotiate and draft the term sheet, the shareholders agreement, the joint venture agreement, the articles of incorporation of the corporation to be established, the bylaws. The corporate lawyers would instruct their paralegals to file the incorporation documents with the Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC. So when you talk corporate lawyering, you're really talking business. You will learn a lot about business when you're a corporate lawyer, whether it's just about business in general or the business specific to the industry that you are in. Basically, whatever the corporation wants to do, the corporate lawyers are there to make it happen. Let's go to the difference in terms of personality. If you're a litigation lawyer, then obviously, you have to be good at arguing, at persuading, at making a point. You have to be good at public speaking. You can't be the type of person who gets self-conscious when there are a lot of people listening to or looking at you. You have to be calm under pressure. You can't be the type of person who panics when things don't go according to the plan. Because when you're a litigation lawyer, a lot of the time, your plans get tossed out the window. And sometimes there even is no plan. I know this because my husband Mike is a litigation lawyer. You have to know how to adapt to last minute announcements or to changes to your plan. Because sometimes the court or regulatory agency will give last minute announcements. As in all of a sudden, there's a hearing tomorrow. Ganon. You cannot be hot tempered because that would not look good for you in court. You should be okay with traveling a lot to attend all of your different hearings. Also, you should not be antisocial or introverted because as a litigation lawyer, you will deal with a lot, lot, lot of people. To be a litigation lawyer, you have to have a knack for it. It's a gift and a skill set that not everyone has. It's a gift and a skill set that I don't have. Not everyone can hack it. If you're a corporate lawyer naman, you have to be very detailed and meticulous. You have to be meticulous because you cannot miss anything in a document. Sometimes just a single word or a single requirement could have a huge, massive, catastrophic impact on a transaction. You have to have good foresight. You have to be able to foresee and to anticipate 
the results of the provisions of a contract or all possible permutations of violations of a contract, precisely so that you can already craft provisions to protect against those instances. You have to be good at writing, good with grammar. You have to be very good at researching, at finding the most recent issuance that could impact your legal opinion versus the most obsolete and oldest issuance of some government agency that could have an effect on your opinion. You have to be patient because being a corporate lawyer really entails so many R's pouring over all of these voluminous documents. It involves so much time spent looking through years and years and years worth of government issuances from all of these agencies. It is just so much in terms of volume. You cannot be the type who gets overwhelmed when a ton of work is dumped on your lap because that happens a lot of the time. Corporate work always comes in a steady stream. You have to be organized. You have to be good with time management. You have to be persevering because no matter how difficult the legal question that you're asked is or how long and how complex a contract is, even if it has a hundred annexes, you can't give up on it. You have to keep at it and you have to see it through. Next, let's talk about the difference in terms of what you will learn. When you're a corporate lawyer, you learn about business from the big picture as in how to structure businesses in the Philippines, for example, all the way down to the nitty-gritty day-to-day operations. By nitty-gritty naman, I mean that you're going to learn the things or the matters that are relevant to the industry that your business is a part of. Like for example, for me, it's renewable energy. For others, it could be shipping, logistics, agriculture, retail, information technology. It really just depends on your industry. When you're a litigation lawyer, you learn about the judicial system or these government agencies with quasi-judicial functions. You learn how to use the rules of court, how to use laws and statutes, jurisprudence or case law, and even how to use witnesses to your advantage so that you win your case. In terms of clients, when you're a corporate lawyer, your clients are corporations. It's the same whether you're a corporate lawyer in the corporate and special projects department of a law firm versus an in-house corporate lawyer. It's the same thing. Your client is a corporation. It's very rare that you will have a client who is a natural person. When you're a litigation lawyer, generally you will really deal a lot more with natural persons, as in tao. Now let's talk about some challenges or cons of each. Let's start with corporate law because I'm very familiar with this. When you're a corporate lawyer, you are going into uncharted territory. They do not teach you how to be a corporate lawyer when you're in law school. I would say that law school prepares you more for litigation practice than it does for corporate law practice. Yes, sure, there's the subject corporation law in law school, but the corporation code is really just a tiny, 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 tiny part of corporate law practice. Almost negligible actually. <laughs> I already have a video on why law practice is more difficult than law school. I will leave a link to that video down below too. And all of the things that I said there were true. You really go into corporate practice almost completely blind because law school really does not prepare you for it. As in. So when you're in corporate practice, you really learn as you go along. It takes a lot of time and experience to amass that knowledge. You can't learn it from a manual or a book or a codal. Another is that when you're a corporate lawyer, your knowledge is a lot less practical compared to litigation lawyers. Generally, of course, when you're a corporate lawyer, the questions that you answer are the questions of corporations, not the questions of natural people. Corporations rarely ever have the more relatable questions that a natural person would have. For example, a natural person would ask, Someone owes me money. How do I recover it? Do I have to file a case? Where do I do that? Etc. Or I want to have my marriage annulled. How do I do that? Or my parent passed away. How do I distribute the estate? By way of contrast, I'm going to read some of the questions that have been asked of me by corporations in corporate law practice. Are there any existing laws, rules, or regulations governing the content to be aired by television broadcasters which may affect the intended block time agreements to be entered into by the JV entity and and entity A vis-a-vis -vis the JV entity being partly foreign owned. What? <laughs> Another question. What is the scope of the power of the Philippine Ports Authority or PPA to adjust rental rates for the use of its property? Uh... I don't know. So when you're in corporate practice, the questions and the topics that you encounter are 
really out of this world. <laughs> They're the kind of topics and questions that need a lot of extensive research. The knowledge that you gain is not really practical. It's very specific to industries and it's very specific in general. They're not the kind of topics that your kapit bahay would ask you about or your relatives would ask you about. You know what I mean? If I have a practical real life problem, then I would rather consult with a litigation lawyer rather than a corporate lawyer. For litigation practice naman, I think that a huge challenge of litigation is that it involves so many elements and factors outside of your control. There are so many dependencies and as a result, so many things that could go wrong. For example, you could be 200% prepared for your case, but the judge is corrupt and already has been paid off by the other party. So no matter how good and competent a lawyer you are, no matter how strong the case that you made is, you're never gonna win unless you elevate your case all the way up to the Supreme Court and you can still lose even if you do that. Another one, for example, you're cross-examining the other party's witness and you think you're directing the cross-examination to where you want it to go but then the witness catches you off guard and says something that you completely don't expect and it totally throws you off track. In litigation practice, there are just so many external factors that are outside of your control. That's why you really have to be the kind of person who can roll with the punches. So for the control freaks out there, mag corporate law practice na lang kayo. <laughs> okay, so that is it. That concludes my very brief comparison of corporate law versus litigation. Like I said, I didn't want to go too too in depth because I already do have separate videos, one on corporate law and the other on litigation. Again, check the description box for the links. And that's it, you guys. Let me know what law-related topics you would like me to discuss next. If you learned from this video, then give it a thumbs up. Please also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to hit the notification bell so that you guys are notified of all my future videos. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and remember, you can absolutely be whoever you want to be. Bye!